Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mytho Religio. Mytho Religio is a series of books about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mytho Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I am not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this book series, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories, such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source. And all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story. The true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number 1 and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. For deeper analysis that I cannot share in this platform due to its sensitive nature that leads to the above conclusion, kindly read the books that are available in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythoreligio.com or the physical books at Amazon in color or black and white version. African Mythologies Dear fellow truth seekers, in this video, I will be sharing with you the myth from Africa, beginning with Egypt, that is located in the northeast of Africa. Although Egypt sits in the African continent, it is considered by many to be a Middle Eastern country. Partly because the main spoken language there is Egyptian Arabic, the main religion is Islam, and it is a member of the Arab League. So, geographically, Egypt is an African country, but today, politically, it is a Middle Eastern country. Egypt has one of the longest histories of any country, tracing its heritage along the Nile Delta back to the 6th to 4th millennia BCE. Then, beginning from the first dynasty at circa 3100 BCE, Egypt was ruled by pharaohs. The common title now used for the monarchs until the country fell under Macedonian rule by Alexander the Great in 332 BCE. Here's the timeline of Egypt in comparison to Mesopotamia and Israel for our comparison study. The years mentioned are years before the birth of Jesus Christ or BCE, before Common Era. Egyptian Creation Mythologies just like other myths from around the world, the ancient Egyptians in North Africa also had several versions of overlapping creation stories. Although the different creation myths had some common elements, they all held that the world had arisen out of the lifeless waters of chaos. The great expanse of water, some scholars refer to it as a great flood called Nu or Nun. They also included a pyramid-shaped mound called the Ben Ben, which was said to be the first thing to emerge from the waters which the creator deity Atum settled. The Ben Ben stone is the top stone of the pyramid. It is also related to the obelisk. 
an obelisk is a tall, four-sided, narrow tapering monument which ends in a pyramid-like shape or pyramidion at the top. Most scholars suggest that these elements were likely inspired by the flooding of the Nile River each year. The receding flood waters left fertile soil in their wake and the Egyptians may have equated this with the emergence of life from the primeval chaos. The imagery of the pyramidal mound derived from the highest mounds of earth emerging as the river receded. The sun was also closely associated with the creation, and it was said to have first risen from the mound. There are many versions of the sun's emergence. It was said to have emerged directly from the mound or from a lotus flower that grew from the mound in the form of a heron, falcon, scarab beetle, or human child. The time of this creation is called the Zep Tepi. Zep Tepi, Benu, and the Sothic Cycle. The ancient Egyptians refer to the beginning of creation or the Genesis as Zep Tepi. It literally means the first time. It is the mythological golden age when the gods lived and ruled among humans together with half-divine offspring of gods and humans. Ancient Egyptians believed that Zep Tepi was a golden age when the waters of the abyss receded. The primordial darkness was banished and humanity emerged. Thus, just like Indian mythology, it is possible that the Zep Tepi is not really the only first time, but one of the many first times. This possibility may be explained by the legend of the Bennu bird. The Bennu bird was the mythological phoenix of Egypt. According to one version, the Bennu had created itself from a fire that burned on a holy tree in the temple of the sun god Ra. The Bennu is also said to be the soul of Ra. It was associated with the rising of the Nile, resurrection, and the sun. The Bennu represented creation and renewal and was connected with the Egyptian calendar. Indeed, the temple of the Bennu was well known for its timekeeping devices. Ancient Egyptians used a calendar based on a Sothic cycle, a period of 1,460 years. Strangely enough, the Sothic cycle is calculated according to the heliacal rising of the star Sirius instead of the Sun. The cycle was first noticed by historian Edward Meyer who also concluded the Egyptian civil calendar was created in July 19, 4241 BCE. But this date has been discredited by most historians since research and discoveries have shown that the first dynasty of Egypt did not begin before circa 3100 BCE. Diverse Creation Gods There were many religious sects in ancient Egypt, practiced in different cities. In this video, I will share some of the sects which are practiced in Heliopolis, Hermopolis, Memphis, Thebes, and Elephantine Island. To some degree, these myths represent competing theologies, but they also represent different aspects of the process of creation. Eneat in Heliopolis In Heliopolis, the creation started with Atun, later called Ra, the supreme solar god, Atum was a self-begotten god, the source of all the elements and forces in the world that rose from the primordial water called Nith or Num, and masturbated to relieve his loneliness. His semen and breath became the couples Tefnut, moisture, and Shu, dryness, who begot Geb, Ur, and Nut, sky were born in a state of permanent copulation. Gab and Nut begot four children. Osiris, death, who coupled with Isis, life, and Set, desert, who coupled with Nephthys, fertile land. The aforementioned eight gods were seen as the extensions of the first god, Atum. These nine gods, were grouped together theologically and are collectively called as the Enead. 
Ennead is the cardinal number that is the total of 8 and 1. The Greek word Ennead derives from the word Enea, meaning 9. The number 9 was a symbolic sacred number to the ancient Egyptians that could also mean for all gods. Osiris, the god of death, had two sons called Horus and Anubis, and they were part of the extended divine family. In one version, Thoth, god of wisdom, writing, and magic, was a god who was born without a mother, for he was born from the forehead of Set. In the Egyptian Book of the Dead, there is a story where people or humans have become rebellious. Atum said he will destroy all he had made and return the earth to the primordial water which was its original state, while Atum will remain in the form of a serpent with Osiris. Ogduat in Hermopolis The creation myth prominent in Hermopolis stated that in the beginning there was an expanse of water, a great flood called the Nun. Out of the water emerged eight gods, collectively known as the Ogduad, meaning a set of eight. Four pairs of male or female gods and goddesses. In pairs of male and female, they represented the elements of creation. Nun and Naunet, the primeval waters. Hu and Hauhet, space or infinity. Kuk and Kalket, darkness. Amen and Amenet, the unseen. Because they dwelt within water, they were symbolically depicted as aquatic creatures. The males were represented as frogs and the females as snakes. The two groups eventually converged, resulting in a grape upheaval which produced the pyramidal mound. From it emerged Ra, the sun god, in an egg or a blue lotus like the Indian creation god Brahma. This is a depiction of Nun raising his arms, holding a solar bark or a boat, which is occupied by the eight Agdad gods with scarab deity Kefri in the middle. Ptah in Memphis. The Memphite version of creation was centered on Ptah, the patron god of craftsmen. Ptah was eternal and everlasting. He spoke the word of power or magic, and all the gods and all other things came into existence. The Memphite creation myth coexisted with that of Heliopolis, as Ptah's creative thought and speech were believed to have caused the formation of Atom and the Ennead. In Egyptian mythology, Ptah was the deification of the primordial mount in the Ennead cosmogony which was small literally referred to as Tachinen, meaning risen land, or as Tanen, meaning submerged land. Though Tachinen was a god in his own right before being assimilated by Ptah. In art, Ptah is portrayed as a bearded mummified man, often wearing a skull cap, with his hands holding an ankh, that is key of life or handled cross or crux ansata, and a was that is a scepter, and a jet, a pillar-like symbol. These are the symbols of life, power, and stability, respectively. It was also considered that Ptah manifested himself in Apis, the bull god, or as the ram, a god of Mendes. Mendes is a city on the Nile Delta. Amen in Thebes. In Thebes, the creator god was called Amen sometimes spelled Amun or Amon. Amun existed separately from the created world and was the first creator. He was the ultimate creator, self-manifested without mother and father, and was the champion of the poor and urged personal piety. He was the hidden force behind all things. The name Amen means the hidden one. He was the creator of all the gods who were considered as his aspects. Because of this, Amen eventually became the supreme god of the Egyptian pantheon. Amen was also a deity in the Berber myth, the indigenous people of North Africa. Knum, in Elephantine Island and other smaller cities. 
Knum was one of the earliest Egyptian deities, originally the god of the source of River Nile. Since the annual flooding of the Nile brought with its silt and clay, and its water brought life to its surroundings, it was thought to be the creator of the bodies of human children, which he made at a potter's wheel from clay, and placed in their mother's wounds. In art, he was usually depicted as a goat or bull-headed man at a potter's wheel, with recently created children's bodies standing on the wheel. Although he also appeared in his earlier guise as a water god, holding a jaw from which flowed a stream of water. However, Knum occasionally appeared in a compound image, depicting the elements in which he, goat or ram's head, representing water, was shown as one of four heads of a man, with the other beings, gap, representing earth, goose head, shu, representing the air, lion's head, and Osiris, representing death, or human head. This compound image is a reminiscence of the biblical Ezekiel's vision of the four living creatures identified as cherubim, where each of them have four faces, that of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. The Sun God Ra After some time, all the above cults influence one another. The Heliopolis Sun God Atum became identified with the sun god Ra. Then later, Ra was merged with the god Horus as Ra Horakti, or Ra who is Horus of the Two Horizons. When Ra's worship reached a position of importance in the Egyptian pantheon, he was believed to be in command of the sky, the earth, and the underworld. Ra was associated with a falcon, or eagle, the symbol of other sun deities who protected the pharaohs in later myth. In another version, Ra emerged from a cosmic egg. Still later, he was identified with Amen as Amen-Ra or Amun-Ra or Amun-Ra. The form of Amun-Ra became the focus of the most complex system of theology in ancient Egypt. Amen represented the essential and hidden, whilst in Ra, he represented the revealed divinity. The sun god Ra was given the epithet of the light bringer, and was the upholder of Maat, meaning truth or order. His enemy is a serpent called Apep, the lord of chaos, lord of darkness. In one version, it is said that Apep was born from Ra's umbilical cord, Ra and Apep engaged in battle. In one account, Ra finally defeated Apep in the form of a great cat. Ra and the River of Blood The time when Ra took shape of a man and became the first pharaoh, everything was good in Egypt. But being in the form of a man, Ra grew old. In time, men no longer feared him or obeyed his laws and that made Ra angry. So he called together all the gods. And the primeval god Nun told Ra to turn his mighty eye upon mankind and send destruction upon them in the form of his or Ra's daughter, the goddess Sekhmet. So, at the terrible glance from the eye of Ra, his daughter Sekhmet came into being, the fiercest of all goddesses. Like a lion, she rushed upon her prey. She slayed all who had scorned and disobeyed Ra for many nights until the Nile ran red with blood. Then Ra looked out over the earth and now his heart was stirred with pity for men, even though they had rebelled against him. But none could stop the cruel goddess Sekhmet except by trickery. So Ra made the people brew strong beer in 7,000 jars and mixed it with the red ochre of Abu to make it look like the blood of men. When Sekhmet saw the beer, she thought it was the blood of those whom she had slain. She laughed with joy and drank the beer. The strength of the beer mounted to her brain so that she could no longer slay and return to Ra. Henceforth, Ra changed her name into Hathor and forever after, her priestesses drank in her honor red beer during her yearly festival. 
Eventually, Ra ascended into the heavens to sail across the sky every day. But before he ascended to heavens, he left his throne to his son, Osiris. Of all these confusing stories of the gods, the triad Osiris, Isis, and Horus finally became the most widely recorded of the Egyptian gods. Herewith, I am ending the first part of the myth-telling from Egypt. Next week, I will continue with the second part about Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.